All right, let's dive into chapter 12. And this is where we start getting into a really content heavy set of chapters. Uh, there's not a lot of like problem solving or calculations, but there is a lot of vocab terminology and concepts. So you're going to want to take notes. You're going to want to read the book. Definitely know the meaning, definition, usage of every highlighted blue word in the text. And let's get through transcription, the process of reading and expressing genes. Uh, we're going to cover everything in this chapter. There's no sections left out. So let us dive in. So differences in transcription is what's really driving differences in cell types. Every cell in our body has the same genome, but only certain parts of it are expressed or used in different cell types. Okay. So, and this is mainly based on whether or not genes are transcribed, whether or not the process of gene expression actually starts via transcription. So let's just start with an overview of what we're talking about when we say gene expression here. So in bacteria, uh, we're going from DNA here to RNA to protein. And the basically one checkpoint in bacteria is whether or not RNA polymerase attaches to the promoter region of the gene and then can start transcribing in the five prime to three prime direction as it does so that um, mRNA is basically glomped onto immediately by ribosomes. There is no gap here. There's no, there, it's all taking place within the cell. There's no nucleus it has to move out of. So once transcription starts, basically translation immediately starts as well. So the one checkpoint is in the initiation of transcription. So we're going to contrast this in eukaryotes. We're still going from DNA to RNA to protein. Uh, but there is a lot going on in this before the RNA polymerase even attaches, okay? We've got um, a bunch of different regulatory sites. We have transcription factors that need to attach, which will glomp on to DNA at various places ahead of the gene and influence the RNA uh, polymerase. And we'll have the mediator protein complex come in. There's this giant, lumpy, complicated chunk up here, okay? And then what is transcribed is actually called pre-mRNA, okay? Because what needs to happen here is we need to sort of chunk this down, make sure that we're removing the introns, we're just leaving the exons, we need a cap, we need a tail, and then this mRNA, some of which go on to leave the nucleus, the nuclear pores can actually determine whether or not the piece is ready to be expressed into the rest of the cell and then encounter ribosome. We can have non-functional but coding RNAs, and then these pieces can also be degraded or blocked by another kind of RNA called a microRNA. So this system gets uh, pretty complicated in eukaryotes. Okay, So we've got RNA splicing, translation, and all this other good stuff going on. Okay, so before we get into this any further, we're going to talk about how to visually represent a gene, especially how your book does it. Okay, so in this case, we're going to look at the gene as a line. It's a line representing the double-stranded piece of DNA. Okay, We have our exons and introns. The exons are going to be highlighted, and the introns are shown as like a, a V that's getting pinched out. Okay, so that's how we're going to look at those. Generally, we're going to have an arrow in the direction for the core promoter showing us where, where the gene starts and how it's going to go. And then we're going to highlight sort of upstream and downstream regions. And one way you can kind of remember what's upstream downstream is that 5 is higher than 3. And so therefore, the lovely little stream is going to flow down to from 5 to 3. So up here, we have our upstream okay near the five prime region and then we have our downstream by the three prime region okay and then finally we have um, these untranslated regions that are sort of both before and after the this coding sequence chunk okay that are called the UTR short for untranslated region and those are just shown kind of as gray but there are there are bits there that don't get put into the final protein so let's start with the initiation of transcription. Okay, so how do we start transcription? And so this next piece is the promoter, okay? And the promoter is upstream of the coding region of the gene. Let me grab that. So in bacteria, it's 
right about here, this pulmonary spines. Now, key things to note are that there's a little bit of an untranslated region here, UTR, okay, that does get transcribed into the mRNA because the ribosome needs to latch onto somewhere in order to start translation. And here's the AUG. The start codon is a little bit further downstream than that, so um, there is a bit of a gap there. So the RNA polymerase binds and it's looking for two pieces in bacteria, a box that is 10 base pairs upstream of the um, start transcriptional start site and this uh, other area that's about 35 bases up. We're not going to worry about the names too much, but we have upstream region of the promoter where the RNA polymerase binds and once it binds and there's nothing stopping it, it goes along and transcribes. Okay. Now in eukaryotes, it's a little bit more complicated. Again, we have the um, kind of UTR here in the beginning, for, and that's eventually where the ribosome is going to latch on and start translating. We also have the untranslated region at the end, okay, because we have both start and stop sites on the on the mRNA there, <clears throat> and then um, the Eukaryotic promoters are looking, also looking for um, upstream region sites, um, one that's at 25 base pairs ahead, 80 base pairs, and even 100 base pairs ahead. Depends on the promoters. It's a lot more variable than in the um, bacterial genomes. Okay. So there's our RNA polymerase 2 binding there. It's again, it's looking for that um, TATA box, the TATA box at minus 25 is one of the key ones but it's looking for its upstream uh, region start site. So, and then again, the original transcript begins upstream of the translational start. Okay, so this is the, the translational start is our AUG there. And the transcript actually begins a little further ahead than that. Okay, and that's gonna include introns and extra, uh, exons and introns, and then ends downstream. Again, there's this little, this little bit here of the translation stop. There's a little bit of overhang on the mRNA there. So how do we get RNA polymerase to pop in and make pretty with the promoter region there? Okay, so in eukaryotes, first we have a subunit, okay, so of the RNA polymerase. There's sort of an Avengers Assemble thing going on here. So the TPB subunit binds first and then recruits the rest of the RNA polymerase too. So it's sort of like the um, Nick Fury, right, of, of the Avengers there. About 25% of our genes have a TATA -ta sequence, and there's other initiator sequences, which is why I'm not having you memorize these specific ones here. But generally, there's a specific sequence where the uh, TPB pops in first. Okay. All protein coding genes use the same TPB and RNA polymerase. And so the TPB binds, and then we get this what's called a pre initiation complex of lots of other interesting pieces assembled, and you get what we call the RNA polymerase holoenzyme, meaning that it's an enzyme made up of a bunch of different parts. Okay. Whereas in bacteria, uh, instead of having the TPB binding first, you have a what's called the sigma subunit binds. Different genes, again, have different sigma subunits, and then the rest of the subunits assemble. So there's this very analogous system where uh, there's a first little piece that has to bind, and then everything else gloms onto that uh, in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. But in eukaryotes, it's TPB, and then in prokaryotes, we have the sigma subunit.